Just whenever things started to look like they were getting better, things have taken a turn for the worse. And let's just say that as of today, things don't look that good. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the current state of the global chip shortage. More specifically, I'm going to be breaking down two separate things. Number one, the current events that have happened in the last couple of days that will have a heavy, heavy impact on the global chip shortage and thus the used and new car market. Additionally, we're also going to be diving into some of the different creative and borderline scammy ways that car manufacturers are coping with this global chip shortage and trying to get cars out as quickly as possible despite the fact that we're still having global bottlenecking issues. So let's dig in. Now before we dive in, I do want to offer a bit of a disclaimer because the global chip shortage that we'll be talking about in this video is heavily impacted by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. My thoughts are of course with the people of Ukraine and by me singling out this specific topic to talk about the chip shortage and the war's effect on the chip shortage, it is not my way of placing an emphasis or more importance on this topic versus other Ukrainian topics. But as a YouTuber with a specific niche and with the specific segments of videos that I create, I feel as though this topic directly correlates to the videos I create and these other topics that I could talk about that are significantly more important are topics that I don't feel like I can talk about because it simply isn't my place. So I want to offer that bit of a disclaimer as I don't want it to be implied that I think that this issue is more important than other issues, but it is simply in line with the content that I create. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's dig in. So as you guys know, there has been a semiconductor chip shortage that has been ravaging the entire world, and it's been infecting a wide variety of different industries, manufacturers, and types of consumers. But one industry that has been particularly hit hard by this global chip shortage is the automotive industry. You see almost every single car, if not every single car that we see on the road today, has a semiconductor chip within it that helps the car function. This helps give the car certain features, it helps the car drive, it really helps the car become the type of car that we know and love today. But without these chips, there is massive bottlenecking issues within the production line of vehicle manufacturers, and even cars that are able to be produced oftentimes can't be sold because of the fact that they're missing this chip that they need. For example, back in June of 2021, there were 70,000 Ford trucks that were parked at Kentucky Motor Speedway that were waiting for their semiconductor chip in order to complete production. Or back in August of 2021, where GM had 10,000 SUVs parked in Texas waiting for their chips. This was something that was relatively common throughout 2021, and it is one of the biggest root causes as to why the used and new car market is in a massive bubble. Because of the fact that production is slower, cars can't be produced because of the semiconductor chip shortage. The semiconductor chip shortage is basically why this 2007 Toyota Yaris that I purchased a couple of years ago for $3,000 is now worth over $7,000. It's why you see cars appreciate by 40% within a one year's period of time, and it's why it's hard to find a car that you like that you can find at an affordable price. Well, the thing is, over the last couple of months, it seemed as though the global chip shortage was getting better, and it seemed as though global chip manufacturers were finally getting a great on production once again. And we were seeing the effects of this trickle down to the average consumer. In fact, just a couple of days ago, I posted a video talking about how the used and new car market bubble seemed as though it's finally popped because cars are depreciating at a rate that we've never seen before in the last 365 days. But that is until present day, because in the last couple of days, there has of course been a war that has broken out in Ukraine, and this could have some serious implications to the global chip shortage. You see, Ukraine is one of the world's leading producers of a substance called neon gas. And neon gas is a substance used to power the machines that etch the patterns into semiconductor chips. And it's estimated that between 70 and 90% of all of the global neon gas comes from Ukraine. This neon gas then has to be purified to an ultra pure version of itself. And then this purified version of neon gas is what's used to power these etching machines. Though it's unclear how much of this purified neon gas comes from Ukraine specifically, some sources I read said less than 5%, other sources said 90%, so it's pretty unclear how Ukraine plays the role in the purified specific portion of the neon gas process. It is safe to say that the fact that Ukraine has shut down their neon gas facilities since Thursday, this could have some pretty severe implications to the global chip shortage. And whenever you look at this in the context of an industry that's already grasping for air, 
well, things don't look good. Now, for the most part, it seems as though it's a little unclear exactly what type of implications the Ukraine invasion could have on the global chip shortage. Some experts say that it won't have any impact because of the fact that you can get this gas from other sources. Other experts say that it could have very severe implications. And of course, this would also depend on a wide variety of different factors, including what types of facilities end up getting damaged in the war, how long the war lasts, and what the long-term implications of the war itself are. Now, of course, only time will tell, and there's really no way to predict how this will impact the global chip shortage long term. But for an industry that's been really having a tough year, I think it's safe to say that this is a pretty big punch to the gut to not only the chip industry, but the automotive industry as well. But if there is any silver lining here, it is the fact that car manufacturers seem to be doing what they can to work around the fact that they don't have enough chips for their cars. And I'm going to forewarn you, their solution to this problem is borderline scammy. Now, the thing about this global chip shortage is that these semiconductor chips don't function like a battery. It's not like they just need one per car, and as soon as they have that, that car is good to go. You see, there are a variety of different chips within one single vehicle, and these chips help support different features. For example, your wireless charging pad in your car, that probably needs a semiconductor chip to function. Your cruise control, your hands-free trunk latch, your touchscreen radio, these are all features that need semiconductor chips in order to function properly. So it seems as though car manufacturer's solution to the global chip shortage is to simply not include these features. Over the last couple of months, car manufacturers have announced that they will simply be scaling back on their vehicle features as a way to combat the global chip shortage. So instead of keeping cars parked without their chips, they are instead scaling back the features. That way the cars can still be sold even if they have less chips than they did before. For example, in the case of General Motors, they announced that they would be removing their Super Cruise feature from their Escalade, which is basically like their hands-free driving function. They also announced they would be getting rid of HD rate Video, heated seats and steering wheels, as well as wireless charging. Mercedes announced that they would be getting rid of premium audio, LED lights, and charging pads. Tesla has removed USB ports from the rear center console of the Model 3 and the Model Y. They also removed passenger lumbar support, and they also removed electronic steering components in the steering column. Ford and Nissan removed satellite navigation, and BMW is removing their touchscreen radio off of some of their high in model vehicles. Now, I'm going to be honest, I feel a little bit conflicted with this route that car manufacturers have chosen to take. I think that some of these features make sense. For example, the passenger lumbar support. Though I definitely wouldn't love that if I was a passenger of a newer car, I can definitely see why that feature was sacrificed. But other features I just don't agree with. For example, the heated seats and heating steering wheel. These are features that people have really grown used to. And if I was buying a new car and it didn't have these features, features, well, I would be pretty irritated. Additionally, if vehicle manufacturers were lowering the price of their vehicles to accommodate for the fact that they were removing these features, then I think I would feel pretty good about the entire thing. That's their way of doing their part in trying to get cars off of the production line and into consumers' hands. But as far as I know, and as far as the research that I've done for this video, it doesn't seem like car manufacturers are lowering the prices of their cars to compensate for the fact that these features are missing. Now, I'm sure in some cases, the prices will reflect the lack of features, especially if the feature was optional to begin with. For example, the heated seats or heating steering wheel, that's something that dealers can very easily exclude from their feature list. But in the case of some of these options, for example, touchscreen radio, handless like latching entry into the trunk, as well as the USB ports and the Tesla, these are all features that are being taken away, but the price isn't reflective of these features being taken away, which to be honest, feels a bit scammy, disingenuous, and it kind of feels like the consumer once again is getting screwed because of things that are out of their control. Now, like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some valuable information as to what's going on with the global chip shortage and how this is impacting the automotive industry in both the United States as well as around the entire world. Of course, what happens in Ukraine will be a huge factor in determining how the rest of the year will play out in both of these individual industries. But like always, only time will tell. If you guys have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.